Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime. We have a five pack of amazing stories for you today, ranging everything from the next big Nintendo Direct event. We also have some news on Zelda. We have news on Smash Bros. And news on major third party games coming to Nintendo Switch, including one highly anticipated game that people really just did not expect. So without further ado, let's jump into our very first story and that story deals with super smash bros in fact the next one so masahiro sakurai over here did this uh video talking about the team behind super smash bros brawl and in here he actually talks about the next smash game believe it or not that game of course is one that is currently not announced but presumably will exist someday and as we get to the next generation of hardware these conversations are going to ramp up so we're going to go over to nintendo everything that sort of put it all together in a more easily digestible format than worried about reading closed captions so let's take a look here and over on nintendo everything is a sakurai can't imagine smash bros without him and thinks it's going to take some time to figure out how to make another one happen and as we scroll down we get to the exact quotes from that video i showed you earlier it says sakurai stated the question is what happens next time i mean whatever comes after smash bros ultimate one option would be to separate the series itself from the original creator but for now at least i can't really imagine a smash bros title without me you might think that's a natural stance for someone in my role but i say so speaking objectively I feel the same way President Iwata did when we formed the team for Smash Bros. Brawl. At present, we don't have someone who can simply take the reins. Smash Bros. is a massive, important title for Nintendo, so it's fair to assume there will be another one at some point, but it's going to take time to figure out exactly how to make that happen. For my part, I'd like to keep working with Nintendo However, now for most people, this is probably music to your ears. There's going to be more Smash. We don't know when. There doesn't seem to be a rush to do it now, but they'd like to be part of it. But the interesting part is that while obviously, you know, talking about Sakurai and, you know, his importance to Smash, not everyone's in agreement here when it comes to how important he really is and if he should continue to maintain a stranglehold on Smash Can't Exist Without Me. We have popular content creator over here, Arlo, going into some details here where it says, if you're a creative company and you have directors helming huge franchises who are rapidly approaching retirement, which by the way, I know that Sakurai is semi-retired or at least taking a break. I don't know that I would say that he's retired, retired. He's actually much younger than people even, you know, like A.G. Aonuma, obviously way younger than Shigeru Miyamoto. So he's going to be around a long time. So I don't know that he's rapidly approaching retirement. He just doesn't make a lot of games, but that doesn't mean he can't continue to make Smash. Anyways, not actively training up talent beneath them is a humongous failure of management. Why Sakurai doesn't have one or more trusted protégés is beyond me. And then he goes on to note, I can only hope that Nintendo has and more forward thinking than it sounds and have people in mind to take the reins when the time comes. It's probably natural for Sakurai to have a hard time imagining a Smash without him, but I'm 100% confident it can be done. Now, he's not the only one here as we glance over at Andre from Game Explain, the founder of Game Explain. Maybe the next Smash Bros. game uh, just won't be directed by Sakurai, and it wouldn't be the worst thing ever now if only someone could convince sakurai of that and that's a interesting stance like it's one thing to not have a protege ready but to be like hey we don't want sakurai to run smash what and so this juice man von goes why though if it's working there's no need to change things up just yet just like people like harada that's been on tekken forever with each game being as or more successful than the last one and andre simply responds selfishly i'm bored of smash and I think some new blood could help shake it up. Ultimately, Sakurai should do what's best for himself, but I hope he doesn't feel pressure to do it just because of expectations. And 
I, watching the Sakurai videos over time here, I don't really feel like he feels pressured to do it. I think he just wants to do it. He thinks Smash is his baby, and yeah, he hasn't necessarily trained anyone up. Now, on the last Super Smash Ultimate game, he did start to allow some of the staff at the development studio, uh, Bandai Namco, to actually you know take on some of the role of testing characters. But just because he's allowing that to happen doesn't mean that he's got anyone in mind to actually be a full-on director for the game and he could fall back to a producer role. So it's going to be interesting to see if maybe that's a focus on the next game where he's, you know, obviously still doing a majority of the stuff while training somebody else. I also find it weird that people are kind of mad at him for not training up anybody else as if that's his responsibility in the first place. Uh, so look, Smash is going to continue with or without Sakurai. It's too big of an IP. But... I think Smash is in a great place. It literally just became, you know, one of the best-selling games of all time. Over 30 million units sold, by the way. Fighting games can't even dream of doing those kind of numbers, even multi-platform arcades, etc. So, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with the direction of Smash, but... Whatever, let's get into our next story. Now, before I get into this next story, guys, I got to tell you about our sale happening with our channel partner, Into the AM. And if you go to intotheam.com slash Nintendo Prime 10, you can get 10% off amazing shirts like this. But you know what? I said there's a sale going on. That's right. They have 40% off of their basic line. And their basic line are things like this. They're some of my favorite shirts, actually, because as much as I love the print shirts, they have all these basic t-shirts. So this is like kind of a, a sort of gray basic t-shirt. Uh, you also have, uh, let's see here, I don't have these in any particular, we have a black one here uh, that I wear all the time. Uh, we have uh, sort of a, a gray slash green sort of shirt going on. We got this red one as well. Uh, this red one's also cool because it shows off that they have a, you know, they have the classic V-neck designs as well. These shirts are super, super soft. Literally, like, industry best softness. They're all pre-shrunk, including their printed tees. So if any of the printed tees catch your eye, if you want to get 40% off just these basic color sort of t-shirts, use them as undershirts, use them as not undershirts. You guys see me wear them all the time. Go ahead and check out into the am.com slash Nintendo Prime 10. You can just click on that link down in the description or pinned comment below. So have you ever wanted to play Red Dead Redemption on your Switch, how about a potential Red Dead Redemption remastered? Well, it appears we might be able to get to do that maybe as soon as next year, if not sooner, at least possibly. This comes from a data mine leak uh, posted out here by Tez2 or Tez Funds 2 over here. Uh, and he says, Rockstar included Red Dead Redemption 1 to the ratings list on their modern site modules. Red Dead Redemption 1's original site does not use those modules, which does suggest a site update. PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Switch were newly added as platforms. Now, it's interesting because, well, Switch has never been a platform. Like, you could argue, okay, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, they had the original Red Dead Redemption, but Switch has never had it, so why would Switch be added? And they have um, a, a preview. Now, he does note it's not indicative of platform availability. Like, it being here doesn't mean it will be, but it is fun to note that it is there. Uh, and there's the Red Dead Redemption value in there. Uh, and then here's the platform selection, which doesn't make any sense because Red Dead Redemption, again, never been available. Like, look at that, Nintendo Switch, right down there in the corner. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand uh, what's happening here uh, with this. So I find it interesting because he's responding to himself where he talks about there was a new uh, site update and that it includes Red Dead Redemption Rockstar version, uh, the code name being RDR1RSP, and he's just seen Red Dead Redemption 1 Remaster SP uh, with a new logo here. So what does any of this mean? Well, right now, not a whole lot because this project hasn't even been announced. Uh, it has been previously discussed on my channel and by uh, people like Stefan Dottillo that Red Dead Redemption 2 was in development uh, around 2019 at some point for Nintendo Switch. I have a direct source on that. He has sources on on it but uh it was canceled like it, they just didn't go through with it but we haven't really heard much about red dead redemption in general like the first game coming to switch and it's totally possible because again it's xbox 360 playstation 3 game so we're not even talking about a game that can't be on switch it just isn't and if they're making a remastered version maybe they want to bring a slightly updated version over to switch so we'll have to see if these website updates amount to anything but it is fun to speculate on continuing to get some major third-party support even though this would obviously be for an older 
game. Now, next up, we have to talk about Pikmin 4 because we have some sales data in. And let's just say Pikmin 4 is crushing it at a level we have never seen Pikmin crush before. First, let's get into the Japanese sales since we have exact figures over there. This one coming, I'm getting this actually off Gimetsu here. Uh, but these are the Famitsu sales update. And it said Pikmin 4 opens up to 401,853 retail units. And as we scroll down here, we can see the list of the current top 10, top 11. And you see Pikmin 4 right here at number one. Tears of the Kingdom at number two, almost at 2 million. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're seeing Splatoon 3, Switch Sports, and Final Fantasy 16 down here as well. So you're seeing a number of amazing Switch games selling, but this number is important for a few reasons. And the biggest of those reasons would actually be something that our good buddy Stealth40K put out on Twitter, and that is that Pikmin 4 has had such an enormous launch in Japan. Here's what it compares to the original games in Japan. So Pikmin 1 only moving about 101,000, Pikmin 2 moving 162,000, and Pikmin 3 moving 93,000. Now, one game missing on here is actually the best debut and best selling Pikmin game, and that is Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which he puts it down here. Pikmin 3 Deluxe sold 171,349 units at launch and is at 2.5 million overall. This is obviously significantly higher than that when you're talking about 401 thousand units it's just something that's unheard of is it the switch effect is it the switch effect combined with it also being a really great game but here's the thing that's not the only sales data we have because we do have some data in from the uk so let's go ahead and take a look at that and in the uk after we hit allow here, we're seeing from GameIndustry.biz um, that Pikmin 4 debuts at number one in the UK box charts. Two new titles. Now, again, we have to read this for context, of course, because, hey, uh, Pikmin 4 doesn't get exact sales figures here. So let's let's take a look at this. Uh, posted by Sophie McAvoy, uh, McAvoy. Staff writer here. So this Pikmin 4 is taking the top spot in the weekly UK physical charts. The latest mainline entry in the Pikmin franchise sold 45% more than Pikmin 3 Deluxe did in October of 2020. Pikmin 4 has been well received since launch, with many critics praising the quality of life improvements and new features. Uh, the next highest new entry was The Sims 4 Horse Ranch, which debuts at number three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can see the list here where it's FIFA 23, which is a very popular uh, IP over there. That's at number two. Pikmin 4 at uh, number one. The Sims 4. There's Tears of the Kingdom at number four. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Hogwarts Legacy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right on down that list. So the biggest thing here is that Pikmin 4 is just having a massive debut. And to note, the sales in the UK and Japan do not include digital data. So that's even more impressive because some of the other titles do include digital data. So that's pretty awesome. And I'm really, really happy for Pikmin 4. So this next story is really just one I'm slipping in there because I haven't really talked about it. And that is that Oracle of Seasons and Ages has now launched on Nintendo Switch Online. It does still use the end game password system for those who are maybe, well, maybe they'll ditch it and go with something more modern. Nope, it still uses that. If you don't know what it is, play the games and you'll find out. Well, beat the games, I guess, and you'll find out. Now, that all being said, it's also interesting to note that while Jeff Grubb did tell us we would get something Zelda Zelda later this year, not related to Tears of the Kingdom. I honestly do not think that these Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages game launches are it. And the reason being that they were already announced. We already knew these games were coming. We don't know when. This is how Nintendo handles NSO. They will like put up a trailer or whatever and announce something and have a bunch of games. And then they just sort of trickle them out when they want. I highly doubt that he would have even said anything if it's just the Oracle of Seasons and Ages. Something we already knew was coming. Like, Seriously, we knew it was coming before the end of the year, and now here it is. So I'm really glad they're here. They're amazing games. And for those who don't know, fun fact, do you love Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom? Well, Fujibayashi, the director of those games, the one primarily responsible for them, these were the first Zelda games he ever directed, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. He began his career at Capcom. So fun, fun little factoid there. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this video, at some point, I told you that there was some sort of Nintendo Direct Madness happening, and okay, it was a tinge of a little bit of a fib because it wasn't really a Nintendo Direct, it was a Pokemon Presents, and it appears that we have an exact day for Pokemon Presents thanks to a data mine leak from Pokemon Masters EX. You know, 
The leaks come from all over the place. Uh, so we have over here uh, coming from Loris Eternaste, so Eternaste Zero. And uh, you'll notice when we translate the speech, it says afterwards, if you want something more explicit, there is a campaign called Pokemon Presents, which starts on August 8th at 3 p.m. Um, so here is uh, the data in here. And as we can kind of see, there's your campaign Pokemon Presents with the start date and end date. And apparently this all lines up to August 8th. Uh, a Pokemon Presents isn't really, you know, shocking or anything. We shouldn't be surprised. Uh, but this is just a really, really weird way for Pokemon Presents to leak. Like, a game getting an update and in the update through a data mine, we they, they somehow mentioned a future Pokemon Presents that hasn't even happened. Like, what a what's, what just kind of wacky world do we live in that this is how we get a leak? Like, we've had leaks, like insiders claiming they've heard things that people have told them, and then here we just straight up have, you know what, uh, whoopsies, in an update for a mobile game, we just accidentally left Pokemon Presents in the code uh, oh well it is what it is hey look we're getting a pokemon presents next month cool we're probably getting a nintendo direct in september cool so there you go uh i guess there isn't a lot of games coming to switch in august you know no no like massive games anyways probably some good indie games nintendo did put out a tweet earlier uh you know advertising their august lineup which looked pretty sparse to be honest but whatever and everyone that's going to do it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed the stories if you happen to enjoy this video i would appreciate if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel and you know what maybe go down in the comments below and let me know if you'd like me to do more of these combination news videos i'm not going to promise any sort of dedicated schedule to them uh you guys know i like to focus on individual topics and doing some deep dive research but on days when we don't have a, a super big topic sometimes it's nice to come out here with a bunch of news stories just to kind of give you a plethora of wealth of nintendo goodness so let me know what you think about this and i'll catch you in the next video